What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Knox Diff Golf. I'm Kyle, and I have just completed my 30 days of videos. As most of you know, I made a challenge of doing 30 videos in 30 days in November, and today is the last day, so I'm happy to be wrapping this up. Uh, I've learned a lot, and we're gonna get into that later in the video, but first things first, if you would go down, give this video a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. It would really help me out. I've been picking up a few subscribers here and there over the month, and I'd really like to make a good push until the end of the year. So go down below if you haven't and click subscribe. So in today's video, I kind of want to talk about how I created 30 videos in 30 days without really much of a plan. So a few things we'll be going over in this video is what I used, how I scheduled it, how I almost failed, and what I learned. But before we do that, we got to head over to my parents' house because I need to pick something up real quick. So guys, first things first, what I used. I've kind of been over this slightly in a few other videos, but I was just using the Canon M50, which I'm filming on right now, and also my iPhone. Those two things allowed me to capture all the content that I could have possibly needed over the past month. Granted, I'm not an expert filmmaker or anything like that, so a lot of the stuff maybe wasn't always the highest quality, but I think to the average YouTube viewer, it was good enough, and that was kind of my motto for this entire month is, done is better than perfect, good enough, all that kind of stuff is what your goal is to put out content. If you're really focused on the perfection part, you're not really gonna be putting much out, in my opinion. Like I said, I use my Canon, my iPhone, and then all of my editing was done in Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is a great program to use if you're looking at doing content creation. Also, iMovie, a lot of people are editing stuff just straight on their phone. There's so many powerful things you could be using nowadays without spending a ton of money on software. So then we're gonna talk about how I created some other stuff. One thing that you'll have to get used to on YouTube is creating thumbnails. And for that, I used Canva.com, which is like a free Photoshop. guys well I just pulled up to my parents house they were holding on to something for me for a day while I did some other errands now I'm gonna go pick it up get it back home and I'm excited to show you guys what it is So guys, as you can see, I just got home and I have something new that I need to put together, but first I was going to talk to you about the schedule I used for the 30 days of videos. I didn't have one per se. What I did, and I kind of ran through this in a past video, is I sat down in my bed one night and I just tried to list out 30 video ideas. Some of the videos I kind of already had almost done that I did beforehand and I'd never posted them, so I kind of used those, for lack of a better phrase, filler. And I came up, I think, with roughly about 15 to 20 ideas, so that still left me roughly 15 to 10 ideas that I needed to come up with during the month. My idea was that as I went along during the month and created videos that would kind of spur other ideas that I wanted to do, as well as asking Instagram and different people like, what is some stuff you'd like to see, et cetera, et cetera, and that was used to kind of help generate the month's content. Now, I did get a little lucky working with a couple brands on unboxings and showcasing some different goods, and I was able to use those as a video on days when maybe I just couldn't get a video done on time or was just drawing a blank simply on what I was gonna create. So receiving a product, I was able to build a video around that and use that for another day's content. I will say that I almost failed several times and was unable to get a video out, whether that was maybe a hardware malfunction with my laptop acting up, some stuff went wrong with Final Cut Pro, some of the hard drive information that I had on there didn't seem to wanna work one day, and I just had a very small window to make stuff happen. So let me just run you through the typical day. I would get off work around five o'clock, pick up the kid, get home, make dinner for him, try to scarf something down, and then I would work on a video idea, whether that was recording something, whatever it may be, until about, I'd say 7.30, 8 o'clock maybe. Once that was done, I would use 
the time from 8 to about 10.30 to edit and kind of get a rough edit done of it and get it in a place where it didn't require that much work. Then the next morning, I would wake up at 5, 5.30 and knock out as much as I could before I woke up the family around 6.30, 6.40. So another hour and a half of finalizing touches. I would go take a shower, make some coffee, then spend about another hour before work working on the thumbnail, working on uploading it to YouTube, and then getting some sort of little cut sequence to share on Instagram or different social medias. And I kind of did this every day, even on the weekends, was a little bit modified, but this schedule allowed me no room for error. Like there wasn't a time where if we lost power for a day that I would have been okay or, or something of that sort. It, it really didn't have any fail safes in this, in this style of editing and creating content, which was a mistake on my part and I would have been screwed if something bad had happened. Like I said, nothing bad did happen, but there was a few times where events maybe came up with work or somebody needed to be somewhere for an extracurricular activity that really kind of messed with my schedule and made me kind of made me kind of change what I was doing or stay up a little later, wake up a little earlier, or really just miss out on a day where I thought I could just kind of relax. That was the thing that was kind of a bummer and really just almost caused me to miss a day, which would have kind of crashed this whole endeavor uh, as a whole. <laughs> wondering what I'm opening. I'm going to show you guys in a second. So a couple things I wanted to go over in terms of what I learned. I learned a lot over 30 days. If you ever want to challenge yourself doing something that you're unfamiliar with, you're bound to learn a thing or two. And what I'm lucky with is I don't feel like analytically I was very successful, but there's a lot of things that came from this month that I think will lead to bigger and better things. And so you have to understand sometimes when you do stuff for social media and, and online content, it's not always just about the numbers that you get with the stuff. Sometimes you've acquired a new skill, you've met a new contact, you've done a, all these different things that are hard to quantify uh, in terms of how many likes or subscribers you got at the end of the day. So just to throw a couple numbers at you, speaking of analytics, I spent well over 100 plus hours editing in the month of November. I added it up, that comes out to roughly a little over three hours a day. And some days was more like an hour and a half, and then some days on the weekends, I think I spent like five or six hours if I had to get out the video that same day. So I would say 100 plus hours were spent at my laptop editing, and that was 100 hours that I could have been spending doing something else or spending time with family, but it was a challenge that I wanted to do and see what I was capable of accomplishing. So this month I gained about 50 subscribers, roughly one and a half a day or so, but it doesn't really matter. That's 50 new people that are going to be seeing my content regularly that liked it enough to press subscribe. And those are 50 people that I can now connect with and who knows who those people know. I mean, there's relationships that you form with one person that connects you with so many different people. And not that it's about just using them as connections, but you're building this community of people that like what you're doing and you're connecting with them. In the total month of November, last time I looked, I had about 4,700 views on the videos just in November. A lot of my videos don't really get that many views right away, maybe 60 or 70 over the course of a couple days, two days, so we're not talking big numbers at all, but what the key to YouTube is, I think, is putting out all of this content that people will be able to come back and find for for years, essentially. I remember stumbling across maybe a Peter Finch video from years ago. It led me to click on his YouTube profile to see what other stuff he had done, and I realized, oh, there's all this catalog of new stuff that I have never seen. And that's all it takes is one old video to connect with you, and then it leads you down the rabbit hole to see their whole channel is all updated with new videos they've posted for the last few years. So really that's a long-term strategy, is putting out stuff and then hoping people stumble across it in the future. The total views I gotten this month or what a lot of just a little bit bigger YouTubers will get maybe on one video in one day. And yes, that's disheartening. Yes, it's kind of, it makes you jealous and it makes you wish that you had that. But at the same time, you don't know their full story, how long they've been doing it, how long they've been grinding. And so you just have to accept that that's where you're at right now and try to do better than yourself and not look at the other channels and try to compete with them in terms of views and likes and all of that stuff. What did I learn overall at the end of this 
month was this all for naught because I didn't I only got 50 subscribers and and like 4,000 views like that doesn't sound like that was worth it but I will say that this month has led me down a path that has changed what Knox Stiff Golf is going to be and so I'm going to talk about that in just a moment after I get something set up So guys, the cat's out of the bag. I obviously upgraded some gear over this Black Friday holiday season. I really felt like if I wanted to step up my game and start producing better content, it was just getting a little too hard for my laptop. And with some stuff that's coming down the stream, I have the opportunity to turn this hobby that I have as Knox Stiff Golf into possibly a side business. I wanna be able to produce better content and a, a quality product for the future clients that I may be working with. So like I said, this month taught me a lot. Maybe the numbers didn't show a whole lot, but I, I got in front of some of the right people, I think, and I think that's going to turn into making Knox Stiff Golf more than just a hobby. Even though the future of Knox Stiff Golf isn't quite clear, all I know is there is certainly a future with it. I don't know exactly what my upload schedule will be like here in the future for YouTube. As soon as I know, I will let you guys know. I really appreciate you guys following this 30 days of videos. Everybody that's reached out, everybody that's commented, everybody that's supported me through this, I really appreciate each and every one of you and all of the different subscribers that came on board and the ones that have been there since the beginning. If you haven't, please go down below, like, comment, subscribe if you're just watching this maybe for the first time and go back through this 30 days and check out some of those older videos. I really look forward to seeing what the future holds for me and I really hope you guys are gonna join me on this journey. So as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.